Hello, listeners, and welcome to this, the 36th episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I'm Jacob, and this episode I'm joined by... Dan. Duncan. John. Jack. And we're glad to have you with us. Uh, this is uh, this is us kind of recording on the eve before Adepticon, uh, so uh, probably a, a relatively uh, abbreviated show here tonight, but that should mean we've got a lot of hobby progress. Uh, before we get into that, though, just to kind of lay out a roadmap, we're going to talk some hobby progress. We're going to review uh, this week's uh, Games Workshop's announcements for Heresy, uh, which include a tiny little PDF of Demons. And uh, some other uh, revealed product, uh, which we're all a bit put off of. Um, and then uh, from there, we're going to end up segueing into talking a little bit about one of the more divisive rights of war in heresy, uh, kind of as we see it and as we're, as we're looking at it. A uh, lot, a lot of chatter this edition surrounding the Armored Breakthrough list. Uh, and so we're going to bat around some thoughts on it. Uh, but as stated, we do have some hobby progress. John, you want to get us started? Oh my god, I've been glued to my chair uh, all week. So I managed to get everything spot colored that I've been working on. And then I took all the things that I've been spot colored and then sealed them. Uh, and then after they were sealed, I oil washed them over two days outside. And then uh, everything that needed sand on bases, because I did base a bunch of these uh, hab waste buildings and the cranes and some other stuff, all those got um, some custom mixed up Vallejo pumice coloring, uh, so I can get some type of sand texture on there. Uh, I'm not super, super happy with it, so post Depticon, I'm probably going to mix up some uh, white glue and make some PVA thin glue down so I can put some actual sand on there so it'll look a little closer to the kind of sand colors we're used to. Uh, but it, it looks like a beach sand right now, which isn't terrible. Um, and then I also post Depticon, I'll probably put some little tufts and things like that on. Uh, and then since then, tonight, while we're recording, I'll be gluing all the accessories onto things like the bar and the junkyard and the chop shop and things like that that, that just need a little bit of extra touch-ups. Uh, but that is everything that I've done, apart from ripping my room apart looking for, one, the pumice when I thought I'd lost it all because I bought uh, a ridiculous amount back in 2014, 2015, somewhere in there, when, right when my wife and I got together because she laughed because I bought a whole bunch of this stuff and it was going out of uh, super clearance. I managed to go through three full jars of that while I was working on uh, the terrain stuff. And then uh, ripped my whole room apart again when I was looking for the extra, the missile launcher parts for my Fomentaris Terminators because I think I'm going to build a list with them in it. Um, yeah, we're three days out from Adepticon. I still don't have a freaking list. So I need to work on that uh, tomorrow, hopefully. Who does lists, really? Yeah, I know. I, Lucas said hand them out, and I'll just I'll just hot drop them to people. It's all future works, right? Oh, so I'm not going to be the only one. Outstanding. Thank you, John. It's I will new, have printed my lists. My brother from another mother. It's the new sphere, right? We're using technology? Yes. I'm going to have printed lists, just so all of you know. Nobody cares, Duncan. But um, that's pretty much everything I've done apart from uh, minor burns from grilling and uh, working on bacon and then minor glue accidents from everything else and every every other minor injury coming from this terrain stuff. But it's good to finally have something that people can play on for Adepticon. And so at least it'll all be available there. That's the important part. If I sound out of breath, it's because I'm trying to bend the junkyard into position since I decided to cut the walls off the side to make a really cool entrance slash garage look. It decided to make the whole thing warp. And since... I don't like corporate buildings. Uh, normally I'll leave the tops off these buildings so you can see all my fancy decal work, but to combat the warping, I'm just gluing the roof on, which is not easy to do since the roof technically wasn't made for this building. It's a floor for another building. And I'm a stupid person and I like horrible amounts of experimentation and things like that. Duncan, <laughs> take away my pain. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. What have I done this week? Um, I you finished... moved chairs around. I moved chairs around at work and threw my back out. Um, but despite that, I uh, managed to finish up two heralds and my, my my Praetor from my list that I have already done to take to Adepticon. Um, and then Thursday, I started having a really fun twinge in my back that heralds a kidney stone. So 
Friday I spent fighting the kidney stone. Yesterday I spent fighting the kidney stone. And today, about 8.30, after spending a very fitful, unpleasant night, all the pain in my back in the kidney area went away. So uh, that means that either one, it has rolled downhill into the bladder area, because I haven't passed it yet, or it's reattached itself to something inside the kidney, and it's staying there and not bothering me right this moment. I'm hoping it's gone, or that I'll roll that pearl out sometime in the next 24 hours. Because if I don't, I'm going to go to the doctor, and I'm going to be like, Hi, Doc. Help me with this unpleasantness. And then I'll be at Adepticon, not drinking anywhere nearly as much as I normally would, because I'll have unpleasantness. But, um, other than that, my stuff for Adepticon's all ready to go. Um, which, normally... For me is absolutely abnormal because for years and years I was up late the night before an event painting or the night before we actually traveled to the event painting, hoping and praying that I could get it all done. And so it all ended up not looking quite the best. Now it's, uh, it's all done and I'm actually proud and happy with the way it looks for the most part. So there we go. Um, I actually have, uh, I got a little legends mini of, uh, the actor and Kurs. For uh, or the half herd or whatever you want to call them, their next um, Sons of Horus miniature that I'll end up working eventually, and I'm probably going to pick up some stuff at Adepticon or post Adepticon to uh, work on some more guys, so I can end up doing more work on uh, having some new Justarian that fit with the current edition, because my old Justarian fit with the previous edition but don't work at all in the current one. So, um. I found a way to make them work in a uh, 3,500 point list. I haven't found a way to make them work in the current meta or the current lists, but we'll see how it goes. Other than that, um, I got nothing. So, uh, Dan, let's go to you. What have you done? Not a whole hell of a lot, but I did um, decide. So I had built my list a while back for the Ultramarines for the one game I'm playing in, the uh, um, grudge matches on Saturday. Um, but one of the things that list required was to change over some Terminator weapons. Um, I previously had magnetized them, decided that um, I hate magnetized infantry, and I will never do it again. So <clears throat> since I wanted to put Thunder Hammers on these guys, I took the magnetized weapons off, uh, built some Thunder Hammers with some Cromlech hammer bits I had lying around, and... Um, now we'll have a command squad terminators with thunder hammers. Um, I have a few train pieces that I wanted to get done to add to my tables that I'll have at Adepticon. Uh, so I did, there's printed pieces. So I did some priming this week and got halfway through and ran out of filler primer. So Friday night I went and got filler primer. Um, but it's been freezing yesterday and today, so I'm going to have to prime those up um, probably tomorrow after work. Um, and then I'll airbrush those. Um, probably some on Wednesday. I'm off work. Um, I don't know. We probably talked about this, but Adepticon is my home con, so I have no travel time. It's like 20 minutes away from where I live. Um, so I can paint to the last minute. And that's pretty much what I've been working on. Um, yeah, so let's see who hasn't gone. Jack. Um, currently, I am gluing a sword onto the body of the Little Legends Ultramarines Praetor um, that came in Thursday of this week. And uh, I will be weathering him tonight, and he'll be going to Debicon with me. Not that I needed him or wanted him. I just wanted to paint him, so there's that. Um, see here, I'm not really sure where I left off last week. Um, my army's basically been done for a while. I've just been painting stuff just for fun. Um, did basing last week, painted rims, um, and then spent the majority of my free time this week uh, making sure that my job was in order so that I would have a nice, peaceful time off. Um, and then... Uh, watching battle reports in my free time, discovering that apparently the Phosphex launcher on the Leviathan is no longer one shot. Um, didn't know that until, I don't know, earlier today. Um, Jacob, what have you been up to, dog? 
in the last week, uh, I have been extremely fortunate. I have a new roof on my house. Uh, I was able to get a contractor in to cut out the uh, stained uh, or, or leaked through uh, drywall and parts of my ceiling and get all that repaired. Um, and so that's led to me uh, getting to spend time uh, continuing to gut uh, my bedroom to prep that, or my now former master bedroom, uh, to prep that for paint. Um, I also uh, set, up a, set up a new aquarium for the fiancé. She wanted to try to keep some uh, dwarf puffers. Uh, so we've got that going on. That's very exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully this coming week I'll be scheduling with a guy to get my garage door replaced because once the garage door gets replaced, uh, that'll, that'll be tentatively, or ideally, knock on wood, uh, the end of the road. Um, that'll be the last thing on the house that has been in the process of ripping itself apart uh, or otherwise has been in dire need of replacement. Uh, I'm extremely excited, um, very hopeful about all that. Um, so that's that's kind of been the the week at hand for me in that regard. So I gotta ask, how much was the roof ballpark? Uh, I'm I'm still waiting on the final invoice to come back. Uh, my initial quote was uh, was about eleven thousand. Um, decking was quoted at fifty five dollars a sheet. And I got a call very early into their process saying, we brought five sheets, so I don't know if that meant that they were going to bill those or if that was included in the quote. But regardless, they were like, uh, we're going to Lowe's and picking up another 20 sheets. Uh, the decking's in worth, worse shape than expected. And I was like, well, worse shape than you may have expected, but um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what we got going on here. Um not not well, ideal, but so I'm I'm betting uh, by the time that that decking and everything comes back, I'm going to be looking somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve or thirteen thousand. Hey, before we move on too far, I wanted to throw out here, and I, I know I didn't record, but um, I want to say you know again thanks for everything you do, Jacob. But very specifically, uh, that was an awesome job getting the uh, the con survival guide episode. Um, edited and posted so quickly that was awesome because i know we recorded that a little late in the game and we wanted to get it out so um just wanted to throw out that big thanks because you do awesome job and that was uh above and beyond in my opinion so great job my pleasure i i knew that that was something that was important to us on more than one level um not just obviously for the hope to be able to get it out to listeners in time uh, so that they could pack appropriately for Adepticon, but um, but also just just for us, kind of as a as a general thing that we were all very excited to talk about right then and there. Um, that being said, uh, here's here's hoping that um, and and I think I said as much at least to you guys. Uh, I did migrate to a new PC on Monday, uh, and so that has meant uh, changing out my audio workspace. Um, very excited to be working in a different program, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that it's going to turn out well, um, but it may cause at least a, a short-term hiccup in uh, delivery on episodes. I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case, and if it does, I'll figure out how to get the old machine spun back up um, and, and get that moving, uh, just so that we don't lose sight uh, of, of where we're going and what we're doing, especially with our uh, one year coming up. Yep, yep. I can't believe that we've actually, for the most part and most weekends, other than the ones we skipped, been able to keep this ball rolling for a year now, or close to. On the off chance that I get this out before Adepticon, or at least before the end of Adepticon, uh, if you were listening to this, make sure to track down one of us. Uh, I unfortunately will not be able to attend Adepticon, but it seems like at mm. least... The, the other four who are on tonight's show with me, uh, they will be there. Um, and if you track one of them down and ask a couple questions about our anniversary, uh, there might be uh, a few things that we can we can talk about with you there in person. Very exciting. Yep, and Jamie will be there too. He's rooming with me. I'm just going to go ahead and say don't ask me anything because I know nothing. 
and that's not hot, hyperbole or anything. I literally don't know what's going on anymore in my life. <laughs> I, 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 the any more parts what surprises me. It shouldn't. I, I faked it for a long time. A couple of days when he had it all together in the in the eighties. I miss the eighties. I don't. I remember most of them, sort of. It was the seventies. If you don't remember, you weren't really there, right? Probably. I don't really remember the seventies, so I'm good. I, I was negative. I was. I was alive for the vast majority of the seventies, but I was not doing many drugs, and when I was nine or younger. So well, I mean, it doesn't matter. if you're going to brag, brag hard, man. <laughs> so I wasn't there for the '70s. So I'm fine with that. Y'all are talking about stuff that like I've only read about in history books, so we can just we can just leave that all there. I was gonna uh, say, you, were you even around in the, in the '80s at all? I was Jake? not. I don't. Yeah. I don't show up until '90. So there yeah. you go. Um. Before we get too far down uh, memory lane into uh, days long past, um, let's talk about what released this last week. We put out some pretty bold speculation on our last show that uh, we thought very strongly we were going to see The Contemptor this week. Uh, and that didn't door. happen. That didn't happen. What did we see this week? We, uh, Exemplary we battle. Well, we need to put another dollar in the, uh, the great heresy accountability, but he's calls the future jar because it's yeah. every time we speak that monkey paw curls. Yeah, um, yeah, it gets a little more grim. That's one way of putting it. I mean, it is a grim dark setting, right? I, I mean, it's a something. Right now, it's grim dark later. But anyway, we oh, got an God. exemplary battle. We got a, a pseudo exemplary battle uh, to cover the fact that uh, now that the esoterist model is available for actual physical purchase, they figured they might as well release some kind of mandatory minimum rules to get a bound demons list functional. And they include rules for Samus, Cabanda, and demon brutes and that is it uh and i'm uh livid uh i would say that that we waited this long and this is what we got um things like korax utter blight not covered at all not referenced um the the fact that someone at games workshop uh still does not understand that Chaos players don't necessarily want literal chaos of, oh, hey, by the way, every time you use this unit, you have to roll a die and see what happens. Just not great. Yeah. Well, the, the best part was that the, the, they posted that the entire PDF of Demons is coming soon. And the reason why it's taking so long is because they want to balance it. Because they've done such a good job with the rest of what they've balanced, right? Yeah, because yeah. the, the game clearly PDF fits... Go ahead, John. I was, I was gonna, you're probably saying the same thing. Is it PDF balanced or is it book balanced? And then mm -hmm. which book? The balanced game with clearly what? Balanced with fits with together for uh, the two Astartes books and maybe Mechanicum. Uh, and then um, please don't ask any questions about Knights, Custodes, Sisters, or Solar Ox. I mean... I want to not ask these questions, but I also want to ask these questions. It's it's staggering to me. So, uh, for those of you unaware, uh, demons in their current incarnation function very similar to, let's say, how Dark Angels or Thousand Suns focus. Uh, each unit that you take, you can give one of the eight points of the stars of chaos to, uh, and I genuinely feel like these eight points are more sloppily or haphazardly kind of cobbled together than what I feel anything about the Thousand Suns is. Uh, and you guys have heard me speak with plenty of derision uh, about the the way they've handled Thousand Suns up to this point. Um, but the the fact that two or three really rise to the top as like, oh, these are completely functional. Uh, one is uh, 
basically making your your army or or these units adjust how they interact with the demonic fearless rules um one i think says very similar to emperor's children that you swing one point ahead of when you should in combat um and then there's some other like odds or ends um but then again uh, on the on the hard opposite end of the scale you have one rule or or one of these eight points that says every time your unit uh, goes into close combat and makes an attack, so not just like when you charge, you keep the same attack through the whole turn, but every single turn that that unit is locked in combat, you have to make a new chaos roll for it to see what its weapons in hand to hand are. That's like I'm sorry, I, I didn't read it because I was like, oh, it's, I'll wait till the real book comes out or I'll wait till militia comes out, but that's. An extra special level of window I, looking. I reiterate, I need to start taking up as a hobby spending my calendar year making a tiny scale model of the Library of Alexandria and then setting it on fire over the New Year holiday so that we can forget every lesson we've learned. Games Workshop, you did this in 6th edition when you published two Chaos Codexes within the span of like six months of each other. And nobody wanted to buy or play those books because they involved so much cross-referencing tables and never having an idea reasonably of how your unit was actually going to work minute to minute on the tabletop. It's mm -hmm. not fun. It's not fun, and just as some of my other complaints about this edition, it seems to involve rolling dice for the sake of rolling dice. I understand that we roll dice to represent certain things here on the tabletop, but ultimately, rolling dice cannot be your army's mechanical identity. It's stupid, and it wastes everyone's time. There is a reason that no one played pure goblin armies in fantasy. Because it was it was the same thing. It was just, oh, you came within six inches of my unit? Let me roll a dice. Oh, that, that dice caused me to have to roll another dice on this other unit, which causes me to have to roll dice on these dice. Then I roll dice, and then just consult the tables, and then that says tables. It was just constantly like that. I remember painting up um, like 800 goblins or something stupid to make a 2,000-point army, and I was like, is this an anxiety attack, or am I just really going to say how stupid this is? Because I couldn't figure it out. It was just... I felt so dumb for having built all of them and then I never touched it again. And, and, and again, I, I think it's not just the fact I, I, I like, and I do want to say positively, I do like the idea of the eight pointed star being a pseudo legions of Stardis type thing for demons. Um, I don't immediately know or understand why Mechanicum didn't get that or why Solar Ox didn't get that. Um, but but that's fine. A way to add texture to this army is just fine. Um, but uh, uh, lo and behold, I, I missed a prediction last time we talked about this because I figured there was absolutely no way that we were going to push a demon's PDF out the door that didn't include how to use the existing plastic demon model range. And unfortunately, I was not just wrong. I was so mind-numbingly wrong that the only demons we know how to use right now are the brute kit that I don't know if I've ever seen in person. Yeah, it's basically they only came out with rules for the four. Bare the minimum. Five, yeah, for four of the five Forge World Heresy demons. Yeah, it's it's literally they did the bare minimum and think that we as a community are going to be accepting of that. Yet, in every single time that GW or Forge World posts to Facebook or Instagram or whatever, they get burned to the ground by people griping and complaining and pretty much just yelling at them for their nonsense. So I don't quite understand how they think they're going to get away with it. And they wonder why. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the uh, the Dante thing. Oops, some fumble-fingered intern accidentally mailed out a Dante to a guy when he had mailed out the new Dante to a guy when he had ordered the old Dante. And oops, he got it, and he painted it up, and he posted pictures of it on all the social media. So it spread like wildfire. And then GW had to play um, Fire Brigade and put out the flames of, oh, oh uh, yeah, we, we did that, and uh, we didn't mean to uh, do that immediately, so uh, our bad. 
And then I don't people think sit there. It's just the way, like, if it was someone, if someone got it, they would have posted pictures of the sprues first, and then they would have painted it up. They would have spoiled that super quick. I think that that was a, a paid painter, and it's, it's, oops, we leaked it. it. Like, yeah, the same way that the, the, uh, Imperial Guard stuff with uh, Ursula Creed showed up. It's very possible, but I, the one thing that makes me think it might not be is someone then posted on when they announced the uh, the Dante. Someone then posted asking them where the Primaris version of uh, Cowboy Drago is, and the Forge World intern replied, "Hopefully not on its way to somebody via shipping problems." <laughs> yeah, but that would. I mean, that's how they would reply to it anyway. Yeah, that's just a funny intern. Yeah, yeah. So I bet you, I bet they you that they sold. At, I bet you they've sold at least five Kabanda models since Tuesday. So you know, ultimately they figure it's working. So okay, that's probably. all that they, all that they're going to probably take as feedback. Yeah, you're probably not wrong there either. I, I, I did. I all of this led me to to like type up a guide that I put in chat where I was like here's the games workshop product lifespan in six easy steps. Step you 1. You weren't wrong either. <laughs> you get you get the rules um a, as evidenced by the fact that like oh huh we didn't even think we were going to get an exodus but here's a full functional set of rules for him. Then you get a teaser such as a silhouette or a macro shot of some detail. Next, you have the preview. This will contain functionally irrelevant or outright wrong gameplay details. From there, the item will end up on pre-order. This may or may not include the fact that the pre-order may show up late or may uh, list the fact that certain regions may get their pre-orders later than expected. Finally, you'll have a paper launch date. And by that, I mean the date that they say, if you pre-ordered, you might be able to get your product. You could walk into your friendly local, but even then, if you didn't order from Games Workshop themselves, who knows if your store will get anything resembling what they thought their allotment was going to be. Fast forward several months down the line, and you have actual availability, because the unit has been FAQ'd to irrelevancy, and everyone has moved on. Well, you missed the the middle point there, where we oops, we sold too many, and we're going to cancel your order because reasons. You could have been the first person in line on launch day, but we sold too many, and we just randomly selected you to go after yourself. I've had that happen. And GW remember, would never do that to anybody. What was it the the fifth or sixth edition launch, the one that came with the bag? I decided to order it through GW, uh, or no, I, I bought it through the store I was gaming at. I just quit. And uh, I was going to support the store. And so we placed all of our pre-orders through the store and um, called up GW and like, yeah, we don't, we don't know when they're arriving. We, we have no clue. Call up a couple weeks later. Well, if, if you're lucky, uh, I was literally told, if you're lucky, it shipped today. You can't tell us when it shipped or anything like that. No, if you're lucky, it shipped today. Well, we were lucky and it showed up later in the middle of the week. And then the next edition after that, I was like, okay, fine. I won't buy it from my local store. I've learned that mistake. I'll buy it all from GW and ship it to the GW store for Apocalypse release. So I bought one of each edition, one of that giant super case, which I finally found a use for, and one of the gamers edition that came with all the special cards that you could buy separately, but they were a special covering or something. And so I ordered all that stuff, called GW again, and I was told again, yeah, if you're lucky, uh, I saw a whole bunch of people getting their orders canceled. So I called GW and I said, hey, um, just making sure that my order wasn't canceled. Why would you think that? Uh, because you're canceling some other people's orders. I just want to make sure it wasn't mine. I want to make sure I can still get it. Well, you haven't gotten an email, so don't worry about it. Why the hell are you calling? Because I wanted to make sure it wasn't canceled. And I was curious where my stuff was. Well, if you didn't get a canceled order, you don't need to worry about it. And don't call back unless you have a tracking number. Like That is the rudest time I've ever been treated by a GW employee. And that was the only time in my life that I've sent an email to GW corporate saying, what the hell went on? Never got a response. I'm not surprised by that. I remember another time I bought, um, this is back when Finecast started, I bought, uh, y'all kind of know that I like to play APOC games and I like larger armies, so I bought 10 Terminator Librarians to go with my Grey Knights. I have a very large Grey Knight army, and I wanted a, a Terminator Librarian for each squad because they had really good powers. And I called GW because the Finecast models were miscast, and I said, hey, I bought 10 Finecast Librarians, I can build 6, I need replacement parts for 4. And the guy's response on the phone was, sir, 
no one buys 10 Terminator librarians. Well, <laughs> they don't know the gamers very well. Yeah. Like you don't know your clientele, do you? They especially don't know John very well. No. Yeah. No. no. It's yeah. It's discouraging to see something that I think we are all obviously passionate about just kind of in free fall or at least feeling like it's in free fall. Look, I, I started getting into heresy because I wanted nothing to do with the show. Sorry. That, uh, that was 40 K anymore because it was absolute garbage and I had no desire to spend money or time wasting to chase the meta. And it, cause it wasn't even fun at that point. So I started playing heresy because it was something I already had a heresy army. I'd already built it and I'd already bought some of the models. I just started getting the rules and playing the game. I've been a GW player since 1990. I've enjoyed the game in through its various incarnations. And I've just found that I enjoy a significant subsection of the community more than I enjoy the rest of the community. What I've never really enjoyed is GW's blatant middle finger to the gamers, because that's pretty much what it is. And they're well known for it. They're well practiced at it. And it just seems lately to be getting worse. I mean, I guess they're a company and they're here to make money off of us. Good for them. Everyone's allowed to make money in a legal way as best they can. And if this is how GW wants to make their money and by alienating their player base and, and giving us all the, the wide angled finger, more power to them. They're going to do what they're going to do. And we don't really have any control over that. But in my mind, it just seems especially. Yeah. There. I've used our whole, words. There was the whole age of round tree joke that happened when the new CEO took over and they started in the beginning, really listening to, to fans and, and pushing things out. And they had previews that were kept up to date and everything was moving forward. And we all thought GW turned over a new leaf and, and they've slowly slipped back into where they were and even gone farther. Yeah. But I don't want this to devolve tonight into a, everybody bashes GW because Lord knows there's so many things we could go on about that we don't need to. Let's, let's try to stay not uh, pooping on their parade, as it were, today. So does that mean we're not talking about the Contemptor body release? No, we're going to talk, talk about it. And that might just be our segue, just to, just to rip that Band-Aid off and let's, talk about it. Let's do a positive first. Let's do a positive first. Uh, I'm positive that this is, this is a joke. I mean, um, they, wait. No, they no. Pushed, the Esoteris is $13 hey, cheaper than hey, Exodus. Hey, That's the positive. Let's, let's give John the floor. Hey. They pushed them all out at once. They could have dripped this for the next six months. They could have. Thank God Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. Yep. We we did get the first six, and then they were just like, here's the last 12. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I'm, honestly, I'm uh, I am, uh, again, probably wishing on a monkey's paw here. I am unsurprised, yet surprised, uh, to see the standalone torsos going for 40. Um that was a kick in the kidney. I seriously, guys, come on. That's nearly the price of the robot itself. Yep. yep. They they sure don't want you to buy them, but considering the fact that the old Contemptor kits were eighty, um, seeing it at forty and without the what I can only assume are the most prone to manufacturing defect components. Uh, in terms of the shoulders and the legs. Um, power packs were bad, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and the power packs are still... Eh, I don't know if they're still on these or if they just expect you to use the plastic. Who knows? Not in any of the pictures. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but there's there's more than a few of these, and, and the, the Raven Guard one is the easiest one for me to point to, where the design and the styling on the Raven Guard Dreadnought does not work without its legs. It's the, um, not good. The Iron Hands one, too, in my opinion. And the Sons of Horus one is... So we were kind of chatting offline a little bit about this. But the, the Imperial Fist one looks like it has a bad Photoshop of the word Dorn, but the Sons of Horus one has really bad gap filling. I don't know if that's the model or if that's the model. Do you mean, do you mean the actual center torso the, or the center the, piece with the eye? The gilding that kind of comes off the eye and then leads up, that does not match at all. That is a completely different style of gilding. 
So I'm holding one right here in my hand. Um, I've got three of them. Um, some of these are a few years older, but uh, that gap is there. Um, okay. That just looks terrible. I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying it looks good, but it's it's been there this whole time. Um, because these are not new. Um, okay. this that is literally just the exact same torso taken and then stuffed in this. Because it looks like it goes from a ninety. It looks like it goes from a straight on view to a ninety degree flip within a where that gap is. It's like yeah. they couldn't figure out how to model that turn and just said, ah, screw it. It, it. it does. And in reality, it's actually kind of small, but it is obviously noticeable yeah, in the actual models. And I, like I said, I've got three of them right here, yeah, and it's, it's annoying. It's blown up, so it's, it's obvious. It's going to look a lot worse when it's blown up as much as it is on the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after uh, looking at the website uh, where you go to pre-order these, it does not include the back. It is only the egg. So yeah, they must have pretty comfy margins on these, and they must think that, well, we see how many people choose to pick up uh, heads, torsos, shoulders for their legionnaires. Uh, we're sure these will sell, right? Well, if that was true, one of these would be sold out. Because even the heads and shoulders will sell out ahead of time. Yeah. Um, Did the Space Wolves one sell out? No. no. But the the ra I think one of the Raven Guards or one of the other ones like that did because I remember going in to look at the Ultramarine ones and I had to wait. I know the Sons of Horus one did originally, and I know that the uh, the World Leaders one did originally. I think the Blood Angels one did too. I didn't follow that one very closely, so I don't know. It may have though. But let's I'll be honest here. In Heresy, those are three of the top five armies that people play. Yeah, I mean they are super huge popular. Them, I would say, Ultramarines and Imperial Fists are the top five, at least from my experience, sitting on the tabletop. So it's just, yeah, it's just wild to see, to see that they're like, we swear we have plastic infantry coming. Yeah. And we're now yeah. like an entire month of releases and no sign of plastic infantry. Uh, I guess we'll see whether they make good on that promise or not at, at Adepticon, but uh, I actually unfortunately kind of got into it with a buddy this weekend where I was just like, I think as a consumer, my confidence in Games Workshop has never been lower. And he's like, oh, I, I'm really enjoying the new edition, but like, what's up? And I, I had to spell out like, Here's here's why I feel this way because of the the stuff that's gone on with the Forge World kit for the chain swords, uh, with them swearing plastic infantry is coming and we have no visibility on that, um, with their change in strategy on dreadnoughts, uh, with how long it took to get what we got on demons, I was just like I, I don't care anymore, um. The same way, like, I have watched them punt on strategy for the old world for years now. And I'm just like, no? Okay. All right. That's fine. Now I say that. We did finally get some of those sprues previewed, I think, for uh, Tomb Kings and Bretonians. But um, the, the fact that it took them this long to get there uh, is not particularly encouraging. <clears throat> well... They did promise a roadmap of where Heresy's going, which I'm sure will be followed just as well as the one last year was. So, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that roadmap's going to be just like I-75, like I've said before. Covered in potholes, detours, construction needed, and not a good road at all. If, if Games Workshop can pitch a reasonable product plan for heresy at adepticon and they can get heresy ironed out in the next let's say three months three months gives them approximately until the one year anniversary after uh the the current rules release if they can make things right in that timeline um, I'll, I'll eat my words and I'll probably like have to make a purchase or something to prove that I've eaten my words. But, um, that's, that's what I'm really going to have to see is, is for them to put a competent strategy together, um, and, and do something that's worth doing with it, uh, so, over, over the next three months. So, so I have a question and, and this is, 
uh, semi rhetorical, but semi not. Do you okay. think that the rules writers of heresy really understand that the only reason the game works right now is because the people who predominantly play it fix it on their own and have always played in a way that they fix their games and aren't in the ultra competitive space. And that if you were trying to run tournaments for heresy, it would be completely borked and broken and fracked and um, just I, not usable. Do you think they know that? I think that they do. To it? I think they, they do. They've said specifically after the um, whatever events that they've been running that they do not want heresy. And Alex said this, I think, on our cast or somebody else's cast, that GW came to him and said that they do not want heresy to be the competitive game. So yep. I think either they're admitting it to themselves or they have at least a little shred of, of self-honesty that they realize it's, it can't be competitive. But I don't mind it being not meta chasing, but there's just stuff that's so broken that they haven't addressed in the, the FAQs at all. I, I don't know. It just it seems like they don't know that. We've Maybe got they, nobody to blame but ourselves. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a valid point. I mean, we previously had the uh, the rules was Andy Hoare and Anuj, and Anuj has since left GW, so I think it's down to Andy Hoare, and I got a very poor opinion of Andy Hoare and his rules writing from my decades with GW. So I'm 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 not sure who else is writing with him. I hope someone is to curb him of the excesses because Lord knows he needs it. But uh we'll have to see, unfortunately. See I don't even remember Andy Hoare's name being on anything until I saw the Age of Darkness core rules live stream where he talked about the fact that uh, invisibility was going away and that we were going to get the new blindness power. Um, and I I really, really thought, and and very much, I, I don't know who, who gave it this to him. I don't know if this was Anuja's part. I don't know if this was his own part. But somebody told him to highlight the fact that invisibility rewarded Death Stars and that the power that it was being replaced by actively punished Death Stars. So the fact that you took one of the biggest strengths for a particularly toxic type of list construction and you flipped it on its head, uh, that was brilliant. Somebody knew to feed him that line, but in general, I haven't seen the same level of brilliance out of design decisions in the current edition. So so I knew Andy from dealing with him from... So I had gotten some pre-release stuff and dealt with him on Necromunda um, when new Necromunda released and we were running it at Adepticon. And what I will say is I think he had a lot to do with the, the new Necromunda rules. And other than the release cycle and 47 books in order to play Necromunda. I think there's a lot they did with the game itself um, that I like. So that was my experience coming in, but that doesn't mean that I've seen the same thing out of the heresy. So Andy Hoare was the lead writer on fourth edition. That should tell you all you need to know. Yeah. And the problem with comparing Necromunda to heresy is Necromunda is basically D and D. Oh sure, I understand. Yeah, there's there's a lot of, and I don't mind. I I, I kind of hate having to buy them all, but I don't mind at the end of the day having all the Necromunda books because they each do something different. If I want to run a, a my buddy who's playing Necromunda with me doesn't have to have all the books I have to have. Unlike Heresy, where if I'm playing Marines and I'm summoning demons, I have to have the Marine book. I have to have the Demon book or PDF at this point. Uh, I have to have whatever else comes out. It's 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 so, almost more like Titanicus in that instance where you have to have you have to keep up with the Joneses as far as book buying goes. But don't you think at some level that they think that heresy is similar to Necromunda in that regard, in that 
because everybody wants to play narrative and and do everything narrative and events are narrative that they look at it like we're playing it like self DMing and it is a D and D role playing game. Last on edition, last edition, I think so. This edition, I don't. Um, and I I say that because last edition with with the demons rules that we did get. And and I think it was even very explicitly stated in that demon rules entry where it's like, hey, we we really do expect event organizers to run this list, um, and I don't see those same fingerprints on this new edition, over or otherwise. There was also all those campaign war gears that ever in the beginning of Heresy, everyone thought was normal, and was putting into lists. In reality, we were supposed to go quest for it. Remember about the void teleport harness and all the other weird crap? Yeah, the void harness and the nanite blaster and then your legion-specific relics, which... That was so weird when it was like, oh, salamanders can take Mantle of the Elder Drake because it's in their Red Book army list selection rather than being in the legion relics list in, like, book four. Yep. I'm going to say this about those relics. I only ever saw one event that allowed them. And I never saw so many Nanite Blasters running around in the same place. All my group couldn't figure, because we were just getting started in Heresy, and we couldn't figure it out. And so you had the one guy that took, like, all of them and made the super beat stick character that was, like, 500 points, almost second edition. And then everyone else was just like, uh, those seem a little weird. I'm not going to take them. Uh, yeah, we... I really liked it when people stopped using those things, because, no. We had it where you could choose to spend your Lord of War slot to buy a relic for an appropriate bearer model, and then that model, when they died, gave up price of failure. Uh, and because it took your Lord of War choice, you couldn't take a Typhon, you couldn't take your Primark, we chose to do it that way. And understandably, there were very few people who wanted to use relics in that case, um, but we thought it was a more fun or a more interesting way of soft banning those, rather than to have to, to nail them down explicitly. I like that fix a lot. I just, so we were, I'm glad we don't see them in that anymore. Guys and they were trying to figure out whether they wanted to stay 40k, and because it seemed every new edition, every new thing for 40k that came out, they hit hard. And that's kind of what got me out of 40k this and into Pharisee this. Well, and, and again, I think that's part of the D&D point, though. That list is gone. We don't have anything present that's really supposed to campaign present the feeling of a campaign setting. Yeah, um, and every black book came with their own campaign. We don't even have that now. Like we no. don't have, they couldn't have even PDF. We we kind of had the exemplary battles, and they have a little bit of a a campaign feel, but it's like three or four linked battles. It's not like a do this, then this, and ladder, and so. So here's a question, and I, I guess I haven't spent the time to go back and look at this, but do any of those campaigns get broken or not usable? I mean, admittedly, they're not published and expensive to get, but could you still do them with 2.0 rules? Um, would they still work? You could do parts of them, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of it's missions that are specific, and, and some of the, like uh deadly war gear or deadly terrain stuff would now be uh, exponentially more horrific since it's like ap2 and ap3 which has become rarer in this edition but um if anything that might be better for this roll buckets of dice edition hmm. Hmm. certainly something to think about um did we have any last notes to uh, to ruminate on there before we move on to uh, the larger topic of Armored Breakthrough? Is it still Armored Breakthrough, or did they change it? Is it Armored Spearhead now? Armored Spearhead now. Ah, uh, okay. To pile us under. That's okay, though. Yeah. So I, I ran Armored Breakthrough back in 1.0. Uh, Adepticon 2019, I built an Armored Breakthrough list that was... <laughs> An HQ Sakaran, an Elite Sakaran, ten Predators as troops with auto cannons and heavy bolters that were in squads of uh, two, and then it had four Javelins and ten Multi Melta attack bikes for three K. Oh, and then six fast indicators. 
Um, I took really close to that 3K list and tried to run it uh, as kind of for the launching off event that we kind of ran in, in Houston with Michael uh, in 2.0. And I really found out that, one, the the problems that I had before uh, were really the... If anyone got really scared of the tanks and tried to outshoot me, I could win every game. But if they understood that the, the biggest weakness of a tank is the assault rules and that everyone around carries a crack grenade for the most part, uh, if you just charge the things, they blew up like crazy. And I found the uh, the newer squad vehicle squadron rules seem to hurt more as you can kill a tank and then move on to another tank before having to worry about uh, over-exploding it like you could before where you would have to to roll dice and figure out what blew up. Well, and not just that. Uh, the fact that if, if you do either in shooting or in melee manage to explode one, the fact that you can cascade that into more damage onto others more reliably because of the, the yep. I have no idea why they did it. Strength eight explosion. Um, yeah. yeah that, that wasn't needed when the, the, the game I played of 2.0 with it, he, he killed 10 predators in a turn with just a couple of assault squads and a more Dathan squad and more Dathan aren't really that equipped to deal with, uh, the tanks. They're more lightning claws. They just had a, a character with an attached melt the bomb who just rolled really well. And then that explosion and a couple other explosions did catch a, a couple of tanks and he killed 10 predators in turn one or turn two. Cause it, he had to wait for the assault. But yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a wake up call. Um, I think you're still going to run into some of the same issues. You've got more firepower, obviously, with the, the increased shots on a Predator cannon and things like that. You do lose what I thought was some of the biggest buffs of that army in that anything that was a Rhino chassis got fast. And that helped that army so much to be mobile and shooting. So you've lost the template buff. Or all the sorry, all the templates got sm smaller, so they got nerfed that way. Yeah, you it got smaller, buff. lost AP. Yeah, so it's all and over. And now, now you don't get scoring predators. Yeah. I, I've had a few people around here lament that they feel very strongly that Armored Breakthrough does the same thing that I often lamented Knights did in the last edition, which was to say that if, if you show up to a single list event and people are playing relatively balanced lists... Armored Breakthrough can potentially cause a lot of damage there on the basis that, well, you probably have your one LAS Cannon team, and outside of, like, your one to three Dreadnoughts who are walking around, how many more anti-tank options do you really have? Um, and, and he feels very strongly that it, it turns the game into a paint-by-numbers um, that, that doesn't cause engaging gameplay so much as procedural gameplay i, I think it sounds about right i don't i don't agree with that i think it, it's it's going to make you change the way you think about the game it, it well i guess it depends on the armor breakthrough list if you're looking at the one like i built obviously you would just again charge it and hope for the the cracker needs to do their work but if if someone took a more balanced armored breakthrough list maybe i could see where that would come in and the fact that you can now change the predator guns more than you could before they could take more last cannons than they could in the previous edition. Yeah, I I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not coming into this trying to advocate that that one opinion yeah. or the other is is more correct. Um, just just trying to kind of like navigate the full conversation. Um, sure. So you're allowed to put. They did put the uh, Gravis turret on uh, predators this edition, didn't they? The Gravis Laz. <laughs> Yep. Um, how many points does a predator with, well, man, it's, so it's, it's definitely interesting to talk about because I'm, I'm of a similar opinion to you where I thought making rhino chassis fast, uh, was a huge change for the army list last edition. Uh, and so not having that where it's like, oh, now my predator either really does have to sit still to be able to fire or, uh, what is it? You get to move you get to move half your movement value and fire one weapon and snap fire others is that about right yeah and your your movement's 14 so you're looking at seven movement which is one inch faster than before i'll give you that but i'm not still not puts you at the same pace as infantry yeah 
Uh, a last cannon predator. We're looking at 120 base for the predator cannon and heavy bolters, which is about what it was before. Uh, the Gravis turret is 30 extra, so you're looking at 150. Uh, and if you wanted to replace the Sponsons, there are 10 points. So you're looking at 160 for a three last cannon pred. It's not terrible, but you're not going to yeah. be buying any of those. No, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not too bad. Um, and then obviously, depending on what legion you are, uh, Imperial Fists and Blood Angels can choose to take the uh, the assault cannon turrets. Uh, are yeah. you allowed to take the assault cannons as sponsons on those, or did that go away this time around? I think they could still take them as sponsons. They could before, and they could also take them as a pintle now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Obviously still, still plenty there. Um, I know that the other big boogeyman on the Predator chassis kind of got its wings clipped in terms of the Annihilator that had the Plasma Blaster. Um, and the Flamestorm got its mm -hmm, mm -hmm. torrent knocked out of it. Um, but didn't the Melta one improve? Did that go to a large blast? Check on the size of that. I know it's the Melta, as far as cost go, isn't terrible. It's only 20 points, so it's cheaper than the last cannon. Get my book out. I've got the PDF pulled up. No, it's it's just a three shot armor bane twin linked. Okay. Twin linked is really good. Three ah, shots is, yeah, three shots is three shots is way better than the small blast it used to be, but yeah. but yeah, it's still very short range because it's eighteen. Or did it get moved up to twenty four? Uh, I think it just said eighteen. I'll double check for you. This is why I put tabs on my book. Thirty six. So yeah, it's if you're 18. Oh, wow. to get the so yeah, that's been a that's a significant improvement to me. Yeah, yeah. It looks like I'm gonna have to start building some of those since I magnetized all the predator guns. Basically, yeah, yeah. That's pretty strong. Um, have there been any other things that have really stood out to you as particularly worthwhile or frustrating about playing the list? The other weird thing that they got. The armored spearhead specifically was the command vehicle before um, the warlord trait that was built in allowed you, I think it was within 24 inches anyone could re-roll their morale checks in the last edition. Now it's just, uh, they've changed it to be plus one ballistic skill for the tank, which is really good on a Sakara, I'm not going to lie, uh, but it now also comes built in with a five plus invul. So it's going to be a oh, lot more. Oh, that's significantly improved. Wow. Yeah, it, but it lost. It will. I think it had. It will not die on the last edition as well, which uh, is not as good as it was last edition. But it's it's still a five plus invul is nothing to sneeze at, especially with the way that they've changed cover rules. Absolutely, getting an invul save that's going to be typically better than cover you're able to claim is uh, that's nice. I'm still working on how to balance the list myself. I, I don't know. I'm a man of extremes. <laughs> this is y'all probably noticed in the podcast is me painting up all um, tanks back then and all jet bikes recently, but I'm trying to find a way that, that can kind of balance that list because, uh, you know, the predators don't have line and they can't score like they could before. It was kind of nice to, to bulldoze forward with the, the fast vindicators, blow someone off an objective, and then they would screen the predators getting a four-up invul because the Predator cannon was taller than the, the Vindicator. So you'd get the shots off of those over people. So you that's still get the, the cover shape. Not as nice. That's one thing I do kind of like about some of these rights. They don't really... I mean, they let you take other things as troops. Kind of like the uh, the Berserker Assault. You can take the uh, Rampager as troops, but they don't get scoring. Kind of like this, where you can take the Predators as troops, but they don't score. Yeah. I kind of like that. It still gives infantry, regular grunt line infantry, a purpose. So, so I, knowing you, go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I was gonna say, uh, knowing you played this, and then knowing like we've gotten one brand new type of tank with the new edition, right? With the Kratos that came out pretty much on release, right? What do you think? Does the Kratos fit well in that list? Not well? Is it 
I don't think a Kratos there. fit well in any list. Yeah, it's so expensive. Is my expensive. the biggest problem I saw when looking at it? Yeah. Is I I bought three when they came out because I thought they were a really cool tank. It's just I've never fit them into a list because they're so expensive. I just I keep trying and and it's the fact that there's so many guns on it and I like the fact that you can split fire now. They kept in the fact that you can shoot through your squad mates, so it makes the sponsons even better. The ability to split fire. Um, but the 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 hurt on that Kratos is the fact that it's a it's one target, and they still have the ability for one lucky last cannon cooks it off. And good night, sweet Sally. I would almost prefer that the Kratos was the command tank and the Sakarian wasn't. I'd rather throw away my Sakarian command tank and have the Kratos as a command tank, because then you've got more guns to benefit from that plus one ballistic skill. I mean, as an ultramarine, I can dole out plus one ballistic skill by shooting something else with it, but. It's a tank. It's going to, hopefully, kill whatever it's shooting at. Well, as uh, the the last game that Jack and I played uh, proved, tanks don't always kill what they shoot at. Right. But then yeah. you're having to give up more other tanks, in this instance, to shoot at them, and then you're kind of overkilling, or you're splitting fire, which technically, I don't even know how that's going to affect the Ultramarine's rule. It's not covered, so it's kind of up to your opponent on how that works. Uh, okay, yeah, when you say split fi- sp- fire, am I an idiot? What are you talking about? If you shoot your main gun at something, your sponsons can shoot at something else without, um, if it's not close enough. Or uh, yeah, if it's an any sponsons model, which do not have line to what your turret is shooting can break off and split separate. Okay. So yeah, with the predator that peeks over other tank, other rhino chassis, you could shoot the predator cannon at something over a vindicator. And then shoot the heavy bolters at something to the side that the, they could see, and being a squadron, you can see through squadron mates. So your left, all of your left, let's say you're driving in a straight line, all your left sponsons can shoot one direction. You obviously can't shoot through yourself because of, you know, squadron mate or whatever. But all your left sponsons can shoot one way. Yep. So have we pretty much covered that to death at this point? Uh, I think that sounds about right. Uh. I'd be really interested to see uh, what other folks' experience with Armored Breakthrough ends up being. Again, we uh, we here know that it's it's a pretty divisive list. Um, I think John has given some extremely uh, valid advice on how to try to take it down uh, if you know someone who fields it uh, and uh, you are struggling to be able to, to post a couple wins there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I think we've uh, done a nice little nice little tips and tricks uh, bit there. Did anybody have anything that they wanted to bring up as we uh, kind of close the show out? I was just going to say, since there's like Adepticon this week, and this probably won't come out till afterwards, I will spend some time while I'm running events wandering around and trying to see if there's anybody playing it and kind of see how it's, how they're doing with it and... Uh, you know, maybe have some feedback on that if uh, if anybody actually brings it. So I think I've seen a couple people painting it up, so I think we'll see a couple of them. Um, I'll admit that I, I keep hedging towards it since I haven't built the list. It's either um, kind of my old idea of a kind of come all comers list with Ultramarines where I've I've got the Fulmentaris and the Dorado, but since the Pavace is gone, I really can't use that list anymore. I've been thinking about trying to figure out how to make the the Predator Cannon spam Predators and uh, the Rhinos I've got for some tactical squads, see if, if I can make that work at Adepticon, since everything's got to be mounted. That's another kind of fault that of the uh, the right of war, that you can't take static heavy weapons teams. You've got to be mobile. I'm going to ask uh, for everybody who is going, what are you most looking forward to? For this Adepticon. Seeing all you guys and the rest of the accountability buddies that aren't on the podcast again. Yeah, I my thing is uh, I want people to enjoy these tables that I've worked the last few months for. Um, unplugging is going to be really nice from work and, and from, from this stuff and seeing everybody. Uh, I want to get a couple games in, but it doesn't matter if I win or lose. I, I just want to get some dice rolling. Uh, and I, I'd also like to get some ideas for future projects. I kind of am torn on what I want to do with Heresy, like we were talking about. I think I'm going to take a breather with a couple of 
Gundam kits and some other things like that. But at the point, I've got enough models that I wouldn't have to buy anything if I wanted to do Sisters or Custodes. I'd have to buy a few things. And uh, Mechanicum, I could do Plastic Mechanicum if we ever get rules for that. But I'm kind of torn on, on which way to go. Or even more Ultra Marines. I've got some of those that I never finished. Jack, what are you muzzling for to? Hanging out, talking, shooting the crap, Battletech Kickstarter, so I can go kickstart another battle. Yeah, I'll I mean, it. <laughs> that works. Yeah, as as somebody uh, playing from the bench, so to speak, I'm I am genuinely interested to see how Battletech's Kickstarter shakes out and uh, and what Games Workshop is going to try to offer Heresy players. Uh, as far as a roadmap and, and future releases go. I should have said, in looking forward to people, Jack's Giggle is definitely <laughs> one. Because um, that's been a long time. <laughs> Actually, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is uh, my buddy is also sci- that got me into miniature wargaming back in the um, early 90s, got me into Space Hulk with another buddy in the late 80s when we couldn't get enough people to play D&D uh has built a death guard list and is coming across and is in the grudge match uh so i'm going to get to play my first game of horus heresy with my buddy mark who i've never played this game with and i'm sure i'll kick my because he kicks my at every strategy game we ever play against each other but that's not what it's about it's um you know getting to play with someone who i haven't played with for a long long time and never in heresy so still people but specifically Mark coming over is awesome. I think I'm most looking forward to not only seeing my friends, um, making new friends, but also seeing all the new beautiful armies that people have done in the years that I haven't been able to go to Adepticon. Mm -hmm. And just seeing things that I wouldn't have thought of or come up with myself and seeing what people have done because it always seems to give me more hobby juices, as it were, more ideas. Yeah, I will say I'm excited to see what Golden Demon looks like this year. I uh, backed out of doing anything this year. I will do something for next year. So getting inspiration from that for my hobby will be uh, also something that will be awesome. Yeah, I uh, I haven't done anything for the Golden Demon I've since done... I was like 15 and uh, put something in the Youngbloods in, when it was in Baltimore. Uh, one of the two years I went there and I got nothing back then. So maybe next year, maybe, I don't know. I I really don't think I'm good enough to do anything and get a place in that, but we'll see. Maybe I'll try something. I don't look at it for the competition as much as I look at it, trying to improve my own personal skills and paint and try things to a level that, you know, challenge myself and, you know, if my outcome is something that I'm proud of having on a shelf with the rest of those models, that's what I'm looking for. So that's the way I take that. See, that's the thing is I'm never really 100% satisfied with my own stuff. So it's just kind of how I always feel. I've got a Angron bus that I picked up from Artel before hmm. everything went crazy that I really want to put some hobby legs into, you know, make sure I can do it the best I can because it's a bus. It's not going to be gaming. And, uh, that might be a good way to to wait on heresy. You know, maybe put more into Titanicus, maybe put more into Aeronautica since that's a new heresy game, or maybe we're going to get Epic since we saw the... We didn't mention the um, Titanicus conversion beamers for Warhounds, Warlords, and Reavers came out a couple weeks ago, and one of those Warhounds had a new base on it that's really thin and looks like it's going to be an Epic base. In fact, they photoshopped the base out of the photo after everyone noticed it wasn't a normal GW base. So, One thing so. I kind of hope that GW will do, and I, I do mean hope, um, is I hope that they will put pull some of the stuff from Titanicus into uh, 30K. Because there's things in there that are on some of the, the Warhounds and things, some of the Knights that aren't actually in 30K. And by that, I mostly mean... The Ursus Claws, because I think I'd like to do a Warhound with an Ursus Claw and have rules. I would just count it as whatever you want it to count as. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously I can build one and that I have and put it on one that I don't have. But I'd there's like no to have some to... rules for it. Yeah, there's no real way to, to adequately reflect that in tabletop heresy. It would work best in a, uh, a APOC heresy where you're looking at three or four other titans on the other side of the table. Yeah. I mean, it's the same problem with a, a warlord in general in, in heresy games is it's not viable unless you're playing the, the once a year crazy APOC. Yeah. Anyway. I don't think we've got much else to talk about tonight. Speaking kind of, of show. clause equivalents and things that don't fit on a tabletop but come out of the lore. I just read the fight where Mortarian threw his uh uh what's what's his silence and grabbed the fire raptor and held the fire raptor back while they beat the crap out of it. Um I that was a very fantastic scene that I think was kinda awesome in the book, but completely unrealistic but cool <laughs> I, I had thought about how to build that <clears throat> without having the fire raptors flying like you put a steel rod through mortarian's chain into a fire raptor mm-hmm. i thought man that'd be a really cool diorama and then i was like that's gonna be like freaking three or four hundred dollars worth the models i'm never gonna be able to play with nope yeah do that. that was i reading that i listening to that i was like this is completely like unrealistic and and bogus but it's awesome at the same time <laughs> yep yep any wild speculation it. for the uh gw what we call it uh seven day event or whatever they preview event there we go not seven day event. Was, oh Lord. there will be a lot of sweaty dudes sitting around waiting and drooling over whatever they announce i yeah, say any wild, wild special speculations not the truth Oh, sorry. That was that was just the truth. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, wild speculation. Uh, well, we we've already seen the demons bit, sort of. Um, so my wild speculation at this point is going to be they're going to tease us with an assault squad of some mark or another, in a box set that's a campaign set. I could see a breacher. A, a breacher box or something like that where they're trying to do the Imperial Fist versus Iron Hand or Iron Warriors. We're trying to keep one of the the existing focus legions but also trying to move through campaigns. I can but see... I don't think we're going to get campaign boxes because they're still pimping the uh, the big heresy box itself. I think we might get campaign books. Yeah, I'm just thinking of like how they're releasing 40k and Kill Team. If they're basing their releases on those, where Kill Team is like, we built this Kill Team around the current 40k thing, because that was what the first few Kill Team boxes were, was the current 40k battle zone, but shrunk down doing a thing. That's where Krieg came in and some of the other ones came in. So I'm just thinking like, you know, if they do another release like that, where it's just a splash release for a weekend or a couple weeks, and it's it's a limited run box. You only get one weekend to order it, and if it's gone, it's gone type of thing. Yeah. I bet Dante will be uh, previewed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're going to have to, because I, I suck at remembering names. It was Imperium Secundus? Secundus? Secundus. Where... Uh, uh, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Ultramarines were uh, going, oh god, the Imperial has, you know, Imperium has fall, fallen, we gotta hold the line here. Yeah. Just I'm saying that we're gonna get uh, uh, Rubute, uh, what's his name from the Blood Angels, and what's his name from the Dark Angels, they're gonna, they gonna, they're gonna announce them as second edition pro, uh, Primarchs. Oh, That's hey. my wild speculation. Even wilder, they're going to be in plastic. I don't see Ooh. them redoing <laughs> Sanguinius this soon. That's an interesting thought. I could see a... It... Man, I could see them very easily redoing the initial Primarchs that they initially put out, like I Boris. will cry if we redo Primarchs. 
Well, they redid. Hopefully, I mean, they've yeah. done Horus Ascended, so I don't know that they'll redo Horus. I could see Horus is already they, redone. I I could see redid. what get a new model. They Ooh. said they were going to release pre-release models. I think I think Jacob was about to say if we get redone Primarchs before we get a bike gun. <laughs> yeah, or. Before you know, before the edition is infantry. like fully playable, I I just uh, I get it, I get that at some level they've decided that like that's the minimum investment, and the largest payoff is to redo the Primark models in plastic, but I, I think I think I would tap the mat at that point. I think like, I, like I, I I think I would be so checked out. I, think I mean those, they they do uh, say they're a model company, right? So. I think I honestly think that those came out because Primarchs weren't entering into major figure painting competitions anymore and people had moved on from their Primark models. I think that they're re-releasing Primarchs to keep the the FOMO of miniature painters. That they I'm gonna buy this to do a project later. Oh wait, never mind. I'm I'm gonna buy that to do the project next. I'm gonna do the, it's the same thing we all do, but when you're looking at high level competition painters, they will do one or two models a year. You definitely wanna be that company that makes the model that they paint that year yeah can i throw a uh a non-heresy speculation on plastic thunderhawk yeah uh i think we'll see a release of space hulk only it will come with the walls set and scenarios based around plastic terrain so they'll have um it probably yeah, around Primus even. Given given that we scores. got the the teaser of that a couple of weeks ago, I think you're in a, I think that's a good bet that we're we're at least fast approaching seeing a reissue of Space Hulk. But it's, I but I expect it'll be a three hundred three hundred fifty dollar box, and it'll have the scenarios built specifically around. It'll be like the Into the Dark or whatever are those uh, the walls terrain that come with all those and. You'll and maybe cardboard mats and you'll be playing with 3d terrain um for it um as opposed to just the re-release of the game with the cardboard templates and that gives them lots of opportunity to put out new templates and boards in in white dwarf and stuff like that <clears throat> maybe i'm just hoping for that but i love space Hulk. <laughs> It'll be interesting because the last Space Hulk was 200 buckaroos and that was four, six, seven, longer than that. Was uh, that time. was 2013 to 2015, probably. That was the reissue, though. Yeah. The, 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 first, the first newer edition, I think, was 09. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. But yeah, yeah, we did get a reissue of that same box with the solid color uh, injection plastics. and Because mm -hmm. I knew a lot of Blood Angels players uh, picked up a copy and Tyranid players did the same, picked up a copy. Eh, less so on Tyranid players because the Gene Steelers were a little too large to fit on 25 mils comfortably. But those Terminators fit on 40 mils great. And I saw a lot of players use those if they could get the box for... Gosh, that was back when it was a hundred dollar box, and the Terminators were worth a hundred bucks, just just if you consider ten Terminator models. Yeah, I I got uh, I converted all of them to be Command Squad members for my uh, first company but, back when. If they do that and people start playing it, I might get my uh, Manus Warrior Terminators out and be building and painting, or well, more just painting up a whole bunch more Terminators that need to be painted because reasons. Well, uh, as we've uh, kind of digressed here, uh, we appreciate you folks for taking the time to join us uh, as we've uh, lamented and wishlisted for the upcoming Adepticon. Uh, once again, I have been Jacob, and this episode I've been joined by... Dan. Duncan. Jack. John. And we're glad to have had you with us. Stay accountable to your hobby and to your buddies, and we'll see you next time.